A habit experiment is a period of time where you commit to stopping a bad habit or to forming a good habit. I find that 15 day experiments work well. It's just long enough to keep your attention without feeling like too much of a commitment. At the end of an experiment, you can reward yourself and you can choose to recommit to breaking your bad habit or not. Remember, it's just an experiment. Keep in mind that you can choose to fall back into your old habits, if you want, after the 15 days are up. Giving yourself the choice to go back is important psychologically. It's just a test you're running. You never want to feel like you're being coerced into doing something, even if you're coercing yourself. And that's one reason habits are so hard to break. People challenge and push themselves too far, and it's a stressful experience. So the first time they slip up, they turn back to the comfort of old habits. Or at the end of the challenge, they can't wait to get back into their old comfortable habits. The 30 day habit challenge has been popularized a lot recently. It's easy to believe that if you push yourself to do something for 30 days, it should become a habit. And the truth is it does work for some people. But if you look at your 30 day challenge as a goal, there's one glaring problem. Athletes call it the danger of the finish line. When an athlete pushes himself or herself to train for say a marathon, it's common that she'll stop her new habits completely after she reaches the goal. She just feels relief that it's all over and she can go back to being lazy or doing whatever else she wants to do. Maybe she figured she needed a break so she takes some time off and before she knows it, she's fallen out of her good habits that she spent all that time building up. The feeling of completion causes complacency. It didn't become habit because she was reaching for a goal and not a lifestyle change. When you force yourself to go after any goal, it can be hard to enjoy the habit in the first place. Then you can't wait to give it up and move on to something else. The real solution is to focus on changing your everyday life. You shouldn't be challenging yourself to change a habit for just a short period of time. The point of habits is to change behavior over the long term and to change the way we look at ourselves to begin with, our identity. Now that's why I find experiments are more effective than challenges. Though challenges do work in some cases, it's usually when you're already enjoying the activity you're trying to turn into a habit. When you already enjoy that activity, it's easy to turn it into a habit to begin with. So with experiments, there's less pressure. There's no need for an endpoint where you finish. It's just open-ended. And there's just a decision point where you find out the new habit you established is good for you or not. The idea is that with each successful experiment, your bad habit will be weakened more and more. And you can reward yourself after each successive experiment if you want to continue. Sort of like alcoholics who attend Alcoholics Anonymous reward themselves with a token that symbolizes so many days sober, which you should also keep in mind is a symbol of their new identity. They need to think of themselves differently and not just challenge themselves to stay sober for a month. When I was breaking my fast food habit, I started with one experiment with no fast food 15 days long with a reward at the end, and the reward was fast food. The mindset of committing to experiments freed me up from the danger of the finish line because I knew that I was going after a lifestyle change and not just a challenge for the month. The idea that I could go back to my old habits if I wanted also took the pressure off. And because my reward was the same thing I was trying to avoid, I knew that I could still get the satisfaction I felt from fast food. Of course, after the 15 days were up, my habit was weakened, and after the first experiment, I tried a few more because it was working. I was, basically, I was basically cutting down my fast food to twice a month, right? The biochemical craving softened up first. I was surprised that I wasn't thinking about it so much anymore. Then there was one month where I forgot about the war reward at the end of the month altogether. I didn't even think of going, to go going out to get fast food, and that's how I knew it was working. After that, there was a feeling that I wasn't the person who ate this terrible food anymore. I wasn't, I just wasn't that person anymore. I didn't need to be. And it was the first time I felt this feeling. I'm not sure if you know it, but it's very distinct. 
It's uh, the feeling of letting go of who you think you are and opening up to other possibilities for your life. I know we're just talking about fast food here, but I've come to learn that this same thing can be applied to any area of change in your life. Changing your body, changing your career, changing the way you interact with other people. It all starts with this subtle shift in mindset that sends you on a completely different path in life. And that's what this course is all about, really. When you follow the steps in this course, that's the type of change that we're talking about, which I'm hoping will be worth much more to you than the cost of admission. And remember, I'm here to support you towards that in the discussion. But that's it for now. I hope this lecture was helpful to you, and I'll talk to you in the next one.